In this video presentation, we're going to cover how to output to the Altium CAD tool. If you open an FPX file and you have a part, one part open, and have the component dimensions all filled out and you have a green light, meaning go, you can build one part by selecting the Add Footprint to CAD Library Wrench. Make sure that in Altium that you have the Altium Designer menu uh, CAD tool and that you set it for your default and that you set your output directory to a directory that's easy to get to when you're in Altium. When you're target library, I always select Create New. That way I can go ahead and inspect the parts and then if I like them, I can copy and paste them into my new library, into my master library. And use PostScript or use stroke font. You know, this is for those users who like to use the stroke font instead of the true type fonts. Uh, use mask expansion rules. That means that if you set the solder mask in Library Expert, it'll carry those rules over from Library Expert. Otherwise, if you uncheck it, it'll totally use the Altium solder mask swell rules. Set up your mechanical layers. Do not disturb the E mechanical text. Just change the number on the end to whatever mechanical layer you want these items to go to. On your 3D modeling, make sure your 3D modeling button is checked off and your vertical axis will be Z. That will be the zero rotation for Altium. The TH lead frame, uh, lead extension, that's um, two millimeters, meaning that all through hole leads will stop at the top of the board and then you determine the thickness of your board and how much you want to extend the lead from the top of the board, through the board, and out the back of the board. And right now the default is set up to two millimeters, but you can set it up to whatever you want. Checking and unchecking use step. If you uncheck it, you're going to get a .stp file. If you check it, you're going to get a .step file. And then include suffix in the 3D model names? You know, I don't think so. Um, unless you have material condition where you have least nominal or maximum and if you're using the maximum material condition you might want to include the the if you're going to you know include the max the m at the end of the footprint name and at the end of the 3d model name and when you're done setting up all of your preferences always check save entries as preferences preferences saved and if you make any other further changes, if you change any mechanical layer or any information whatsoever, you have to check save entries as preferences. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, not create one part. We're going to create, uh, well, there's 50 parts in this library. We're going to go ahead and create all 50 parts. We're going to batch build. And so that would mean that I would have to select you know, multiple rows by holding my control button down on my keyboard and I could select multiple rows or click and then shift click and it'll select multiple rows or just click the up, click the, this is the gray buttons on the left of the footprint name, click the uppermost left button and it will highlight all the parts. Let me do the blue stretchy line here so we can see that we have a bigger library. If I select the upper left corner, it'll select every part, all 50 parts in this particular library. And I'm going to use this uh, add selected parts to CAD library and we're going to go ahead and do that. When I do that, it allows me the opportunity to change the SMD density level from nominal to most or least. So here's where you would go ahead and then uh, build a whole library and you select your density level. And you can overwrite the footprint suffix name if you want. You have some options here that you can select from. Then it brings us up to the main Altium Designer um, CAD tool output that we set up, that we saved entries as preferences. And we're going to select the Create and Close button. And we have a progress bar that will tell us when we're done. It's done. And it goes away. We're going to op open up the, this is what we just created. 
we created a new parts, a script file, and then we created all these 50 uh, 3D step files, okay, that will automatically go into Altium when we open up the script file. So I open up Altium and select DXP in the upper left corner and then use my cursor down to say run script. Then we're going to browse to where we put that script in that same folder. It was put in the My Documents CAD Tools Altium folder. And there's a script file. Now we now have a create a library option that we double click. And it's going to load all 50 parts and here they come one at a time into Altium. And I would highly recommend that you break down your FPX file into chunks of 100 <clears throat> if you're importing into Altium. Um, I tried to do uh, 200 or 300 parts and the script file for Altium uh, can't handle that many parts. And so if you're trying to batch build, you know, a thousand parts, I would recommend that you break it up into, you know, groups of 100 at a time. Up will come the panel with all the 50 parts in it. And we can double, we can change um, the, um, I'm going to double click on the, on any part and up comes the property panel for the parameters, the footprint name, the height, the physical description that was in our FPX file. If I go into 3D model mode by typing in 3 on my keyboard and using my Connexion, 3D Connexion mouse, I can rotate the parts around. So this is my varistor. What we'll do is we'll just quickly change the legend to yellow where we can actually see it better. Okay, and then here is a D-pack, what a D-pack would look like. The cylindrical through hole and the lead is like two millimeters from the top of the pad all the way down. We don't know what the board thickness is going to be. There is our flange mount. Five pin with a heat sink slug. Here is the five pin with the vertical mount. 3D model. An SOTFL part. You can see the bottom. Rounded rectangular pad shape. And the SOT223. The SOT23. We can actually see, you know, where the solder joint is going to be, where the lead is going to fall on the part. And all of these 3D models are built exactly per the component dimensions that were put into the library expert calculator. Okay, if you put a thousand different ST, SOT23 dimensions into the calculator, you're going to get a thousand different 3D models. Here is an underbody lead a regular old SOIC, the SODFL, the small outline diode, two pin diode, leads coming out. This is the the SOD, not flat lead, but the gullwing version of that diode, single inline package, and you have complete control over all the colors uh, in the uh, file in the FPX file for those. This is a right angle shrouded pin connector, a MELF resistor. A regular resistor. 
the pullback lead PSON with the thermal tab. The quad flat no lead with the thermal tab. The PLCC, a crystal oscillator, through hole crystal oscillator. We do mounting holes, a land grid array by linear technologies, an LED, which is red. Default color, we could have a save in our FPX a blue LED, but make sure that you have the footprint names that mark the color, otherwise, you'll overwrite each other. But here's a green LED and an LED for molded body LED, a chip LED, an inductor through hole, an inductor chip. A header. This is a regular pin header. A right angle receptacle. A right angle post header. A fuse. A surface mount fuse. A through hole dip package. Everybody has dips molded body diode whoop whoop um the dfn the bottom only terminal dual flat no lead diode the regular old chip diode an axial lead diode a column grid array a through hole capacitor a box capacitor a electrolytic polarized capacitor through hole a molded body polarized capacitor a flat lead chip array the regular old chip capacitor the aluminum electrolytic. This aluminum electrolytic is blue because we colored it blue. It could have been silver or it could have been any color that we wanted to, but we made the default color blue for this one. The user has complete control over all the colors. And finally, we have the BGA with the local fiducials, and the BGA is where we're going to end at. That's how you import parts into Altium.